Blessings a community of spouses. Listen, I'm not going to even put nothing in the bottom because this is going to be a really, really quick um, little session here. I'm going to try to be on here less than 10 minutes. Excuse my wrinkled shirt. I just jumped this on real fast. Yes, I literally jumped into it. Um, <laughs> because I actually have a session um, at four, but I was trying to come on really fast and share five steps for marital restoration to work five steps for marital restoration to work and the lord kind of dropped this in my spirit um, on my way home just a few minutes ago um to share this is kind of like a freebie today because i have been getting um some messages i have been getting some emails um i have been getting some disagreements um from um wise a majority of my clients are wives that's um, standing in the gap for their marriage. And so I have been having some disagreements. And so I wanted to just give you five basic practical things that have to happen in order for marital restoration to take place. And so I'm probably not going to have anyone to jump in. You guys can always come back and catch the live later. But I want to walk you through these steps real fast and I am getting off. All right. Five steps for marital restoration to work. The first step is... You have to surrender your will to God's will. You have to surrender your will to God's will. And the Bible verse says in Luke twenty-two forty-two, 42, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. This is Jesus speaking to God. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, not my will, but yours be done. And so I want to kind of like uh, break that down a little bit. One of the things or one of the questions I always ask my clients that are um, seeking to do marital restoration by themselves, by themselves. And this is called um, either the his wife or pursuing the non-compliant spouse. One of the questions I always ask them is what was God's instructions to you or what was God's words to you or did God give you a ram of word or did God say something to you specifically concerning your marital restoration because that is so important before you start going into this because if you have not heard from God or if God have not given you um, anything specific that you're supposed to do in your marital covenant you need to know that uh, God has given you something to hold on, to stand on, to go forward with. Because some marriages may not be restored. Some marriages is probably not in the will for God uh, for your marriage to be restored. So you want to make sure that you hear from God. And so if you have not heard from God before you even get to step number one, I would say go on a 30-day fast. Go on a 30-day fast so you can know if marital restoration is supposed to be for you. Go on a 30-day fast. Once you go on a 30-day fast, you hear from God, the first step would be surrender your will to God's will. Surrender your will to God's will. All right? The second thing you can do, or the second thing you have to do, let, let me say that. Let me, let me emphasize that. The second thing that has to take place in order for marital restoration to work is faith. 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 All right? And that comes from out of uh, Romans 10 and 7, which simply says, so faith comes by hearing... Wait a minute, I don't want to, want to make sure I'm getting y'all the right one. Duh, 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 duh. Okay, maybe that's not right. Maybe that's the wrong Bible verse. Let me see. But basically, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Make sure I'm giving y'all the right Bible verse. Oh, it's 1017. Sorry. 1017. All right. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you are not engaging in God's word, if you are not spending time with God, if you're not making God a priority on your day to day uh, uh, routine or agenda, then this is not going to work. Marital restoration is not going to work for you because in order for you to surrender to God's will, you're going to have to have faith to do that. OK, in order for you to surrender to his will, you're going to have to have faith. You're going to have to have faith to be able to maintain the uh the timing that it may take for marital restoration to come to pass you're gonna have to be able to main uh to maintain that and so faith is required in order for marital restoration to work and so i know it sounds really basic really plain but a lot of times you know <laughs> a lot of times people are struggling in this area um because 
I sometimes feel, and I know I've, I probably said this before and shared this with you before. I know it's definitely with my um, YouTube family. I have said plenty of times that people are looking for a, like a, a magic pill for this to work. They're looking for like a pill for this to work. And it's not going to happen like that. It's, it's, you, you, it's not going to happen like that. Anything easy, it, it, that ain't from God. He ain't going to just give you nothing. Like it, When he does give you something easy like that from him, it's going to be divine straight from him. But most of the time, God is trying to see the investment, the investment that he's going to be able to place, uh, be able to use from you. He want to make sure that this is an investment. So you have to have faith. You have to have faith. All right. Step three or one of the things, the next thing that you have to do in order for marital, rest marital restoration to work in um, this process is work. <laughs> you have to be able to, you have, you have to work. John 9 and 4 said, I must work the works of him who has sent me while it is day. The night coming when no man can work. You have to do the necessary work. Marital restoration, again, is not a sweet pill. It's not just, you know, God saying sometimes he does. Sometimes he would just, you know, make things happen. God is a miracle God. I'm, 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 I believe in all that. I'm a, I'm a miracle queen. Listen, my marriage was a miracle. Okay. <laughs> my marital restoration was a miracle. What I went through was a, was a miracle. So I understand it. But there was also things that I had to do to bring forth that miracle. There was also things I had to do. So you have to do the work. If you're not willing to do the work that it, that it may take to, um, um, for, 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 if you're not willing to, if you're not willing to do the work that's required for marital restoration, then it's marital restoration not going to work for you. And when I say do the work, that means you may have to um, start doing some research and studying about your role, what you did wrong. You may need to get with a coach. This is why I emphasize and I feel like everybody need a life coach. And if you're going through something in your marriage company, everybody needs a marriage life coach because you want to get with someone who can help you walk through these steps. A lot of times when um, an a, a injury takes place in the marriage covenant, we are so quick to blame the other person. But nine out of ten times God is wanting you to look at yourself and God is wanting you to examine you and God is wanting to get something from out of you and God is wanting you to be able to get something out of this restoration as well it's not just oh I'm going to bring your husband back and yeah, everything gonna be you know great and, and, and wonderful God ultimately is looking at you and trying to get something through you too all right the next thing that you need in order for marital restoration to work is contentment is contentment all right. And that comes from um, Philippians 4 and 11. Philippians 4. Uh oh. <laughs> Philippians 4 11. Um, and it says, this is from Paul. I'm not saying this because I'm. Okay, that's not it. That's not it. I must put up all the wrong ones. Um, I was rushing. So. Um. I have learned is what I'm looking for. I have learned to be content in all things. I have learned to be content. It is 411. Maybe it started off was well, 411 to 13. So I am not saying this because I am I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Listen, Paul reminds us that contentment is a requirement, is a requirement for marital restoration to work. If um, uh, you're not in a place where you are content, which is kind of kind of go back to, you know, step one, which is, you know, surrendering. If you're not in a place where you are content, Marital restoration is not going to work for you. If you if you are that person where you are feeling entitled, oh, I know they didn't. Oh, I know this and that. Oh, I know this that happened. And they tried me. And who you think I am? And this and that and other. If you that person, you don't like that kind of food, listen, God bless you. God be with you because 
you're not ready. You're not ready for this marital restoration. Marital restoration is a humble, is a humble position, all right? It's a humble position. And a lot of times people come on board thinking that this is going to be all about pointing a hand at the other person. And God is like, no, 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 no. Before we even get to that other person, let's talk about you. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about what you contribute to this marriage. Let's talk about your parts that you did wrong in here. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about you, all right? And then the last one, then the last one. In order for marital restoration to work, you have to continue in your earthly assignments. You have to continue in your earthly assignments. A lot of people don't realize or recognize what their earthly assignments are. And that's because they don't know what their spiritual gifts are. In order for you to activate your earthly assignments and do your earthly assignments well, you have to first know what your spiritual gifts are. You have to take the spiritual gift assessment. Again, this is going back to, you know, getting you a life coach, getting you somebody who can help you. Um, they, they even have some of those things online where you can download it and kind of have an idea, have somebody walk you through it, you know, figure out what are your gifts so you can be able to utilize your gifts here on earth. What are your spiritual gifts so you can um, utilize those here on earth? And those Bible verses are Romans 12, um, 6 to 8 and 1 Corinthians 12. I think it's eight to 10. Look up spiritual gifts. Okay. So those are the steps that are needed. The five steps for marital restoration to work. Surrendering your will to God's will. You have to have faith. You have to have faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You have to spend time with God. You have to read God's word. You have to meditate on God's word. You have to know God's word. A lot of times we don't know, don't know God's word. And so they're losing out on blessings, promises, that are available to them because they don't know God's word. So you have to know God's word. Then you have to do the work. Once you surrender, once you get your faith built up, then you have to do the necessary work. And sometimes that means investing in into yourself, investing into what is next, investing into improving yourself, investing into making yourself better for your marriage. Okay. And this is something that I um, help young ladies do with the her um her buoyancy booze and the um pre-wife um his um preparing to be his wife and my his wife session so those are something that i i um capitalize on in those sessions all right and then contentment contentment that is the key to marital restoration you have to accept what is you have to be okay with what, where you are until that time comes and you you know God, you know, put you in the next place. And then the last one is your earthly assignments. You have to continue to do your earthly assignments. Just because you're having difficulties in your marital covenant does not mean life stops and is on hold. Just because marriage is not working like you want it to work does not mean life is on hold. Stop. That's it. You have to continue to do what God has blessed you to do, what God has equipped you to do. And you do so by knowing what your spiritual gifts are. This is also an assessment that Coach T gives in her sessions. So if you're not familiar with your uh, spiritual gifts is something that we can also do in your session so i hope this have been an encouragement to you i do hope that you have received something from this and knowing that we cannot do marital restorations without those five steps you cannot do it you cannot do it you cannot do it it won't work all right hope you guys um are blessed on this sunday if you're looking to start some sessions you may reach out to me coach t at um marriage chronicles by tanika.com marriage chronicles by tanika.com um send me a you can fill out the form and it will send it it'll shoot it to my email and i'll be able to get back in contact with you all right talk to you soon blessings